One of the defining characteristics of mankind is our desire to push boundaries. It could be exceeding the speed of sound, escaping the shackles of Earth's gravity to explore the stars, or getting your partner to finally try that thing you've been asking about since your honeymoon. Look, we seek not only to push boundaries, but to map them as well. The earliest known map, the Babylonian Imago Mundi from roughly the 6th or 7th century BC, shows only a small portion of the world centered around Babylon and ringed by ocean. As civilizations expanded and interacted with one another, world map expanded to encompass the entirety of the Earth. Similarly, as technology advanced, our maps of the stars have expanded and improved in accuracy. Using high-powered space telescopes, we can map the cosmos for billions of light years in every direction. But what lies beyond that? Look, just as humans wanted to map the entirety of the Earth, we also want to map the entirety of the universe. However, the question of what is waiting for us at the edge of the universe is far more complex than it appears, and it's actually several questions in one. Is the universe finite or infinite? Would a finite universe have an edge? Or what would exist beyond our sight in an infinite universe? And perhaps the most important question from our human-centric perspective, what would we find if we tried to travel to the edge of the universe? Now, there are a few different ways that we can define the size of the universe. This does sound counterintuitive. After all, the universe is supposed to contain everything. But, as we said, it's a bit more complicated than that. There's the observable universe, the causal universe, and the entire universe. The observable universe, well, that's pretty simple to understand. This is how much of the universe we're able to see, and it extends 46.1 billion light years in every direction from Earth. That number may seem a bit confusing when you consider that the universe itself is only 13.8 billion years old. At the point of the Big Bang, the universe was consolidated into an infinitely dense singularity before exploding outward. Immediately following the Big Bang, it was too hot for light to even exist. It took a couple of hundred thousand years for the universe to cool down enough for light to be able to pass through space unimpeded. So how can we say that light that's less than 13.8 billion years old be from an object 46.1 billion light years away? Well, that's because of the expansion of the universe. It takes a little over eight minutes for light from our sun to reach Earth. So if you were to look directly at the sun, and please don't, you'd be seeing where the sun was eight minutes ago. Similarly, if you look at the North Star, also known as Polaris, you aren't seeing that star as it is. You're seeing light that Polaris Polaris emitted from that location 323 years ago, but the star has moved quite a bit since then. The same thing is true of stars that are billions of light years away, but when we discuss celestial bodies on such a grand scale, the expansion of the universe becomes far more important. The furthest galaxy that we've observed thus far is Glass Z12, formerly known as Glass Z13, which was discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope in June of 2022. It took 13.6 billion years for its light to reach us, but that galaxy is currently 13. 2 billion light years away thanks to the expansion of the universe. As the universe expands, the wavelengths of light get stretched out towards the infrared spectrum. This redshift is used to determine the light source's proper distance from us. While this is the farthest celestial body we've observed, the hypothetical observable universe is defined as being 46.1 billion light years because that is the radius that we have extrapolated from the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now, if you're unfamiliar with CMBR, this this video is going to be complicated enough, so just don't worry about it. Just know that there's a sound reason for 46.1 billion light years as the hypothetical limit. So, the observable universe is a sphere around Earth of a radius of 46.1 billion light years. But there's also the causal universe. The causal universe is the area within the universe that could, at least theoretically, have some sort of causal influence on things here on Earth. This is believed to be at least slightly larger than the observable universe, though we obviously can't tell you what might be in the causal universe, but not in the observable universe, since, well, we can't observe it, can we? However, However, both the causal universe and observable universes are shrinking, at least in a manner of speaking. Take Glass Z12, for instance. We're able to see the light emitted by this galaxy billions of years ago, but the light emitted by it right now is never going to reach us because the universe is expanding too quickly for it to ever travel the 33 billion light years from its current location to ours. On a long enough timeline, the Earth will actually become more and more isolated from the rest of the universe until we finally reach the heat death of the universe. Luckily, the Sun will have long since swallowed the Earth before any of this becomes a practical problem anyway, and you will be long, long dead. But this does have some serious implications with 
with regards to our ability to travel to the end of the observable universe. Simply put, we can't. Barring some major change in either the laws of physics or the behavior of the universe, it is completely impossible for us to ever visit Glass Z12. Let's say we were to build a spaceship right now that was capable of traveling at the speed of light. Traveling at actual light speed shouldn't be possible for something with mass, but we're going to allow it for the sake of explanation. For the ship's first destination, we're going to pick the galaxy cluster affectionately referred to as El Gordo. This galaxy cluster is approximately 7.2 billion light years away, and once the ship arrives, it would be impossible to return. The distance of 7.2 billion light years is the cosmological event horizon, the point of no return. Once something travels that distance, even if it's moving at the speed of light, it can never return to its point of origin. That's because the universe is actually expanding at greater than the speed of light, at least when you deal with large enough distances. Space is expanding at an accelerating rate, and it's been able to accelerate beyond the speed of light. There are a couple of different reasons why this is possible without violating Einstein's theory of special relativity. First, relativity only refers to the speed of light of objects moving through space rather than space itself. A planet itself might only be moving through space at a glacial speed of 100,000 kilometers an hour, but relativity doesn't put any restrictions on how fast the space itself is able to move. It's also important to consider that space isn't just expanding outward from the edges. All of it is expanding. The easiest way to illustrate this is by thinking of a slinky. If it starts fully compressed, but is then pulled apart slowly from both ends, the coils begin to accelerate away from one another at increasing speeds. No individual part of the spring moves very quickly, and each adjacent coil won't have moved that far apart from one another, but the distance between the coils on either end of the slinky will be rapidly expanding. This is exactly how the universe is expanding and why that cosmological event horizon exists. The point that's currently 7.2 billion light years away is simply impossible to make a round trip to. But what if we don't want to come back? After all, we want to know what's at the edge of the universe, so well, there's no point turning around, is there? We want to go full speed. Unfortunately, there's a problem with this as well. Even traveling at the speed of light, the expansion of the universe makes it impossible to visit most of the observable universe. The furthest we could travel from Earth would be any point that was about 17 billion light years away from us at the start of our journey, though only technically. Because that distance is derived as the limit of a mathematical function, it means that to reach that distance would literally take infinity years. So that's a little bit disappointing. This only covers the observable universe, though. The term observable universe implies the existence of an unobservable universe. So, well, what is out there that we'll never see? Our assumption is that there's just a bunch more stuff. But does that stuff ever have an end? One of the first arguments in favor of an infinite universe came from the Roman philosopher Titus Lucretius Carus in the first century BC, and it's known as the javelin argument. So, let's say you traveled to the edge of the universe and tried to toss a javelin beyond that supposed edge. What would happen? Well, according to Lucretius, there were only two options. If the javelin passed into nothingness and landed, you should be able to walk to the javelin and repeat this process. Since the javelin keeps going even when being thrown beyond the believed edge of the universe, then the universe must be infinite. The alternative was that some barrier would cause the javelin to bounce back, preventing it from escaping the universe that was bound by this barrier. But that barrier also has to be bound by something, and that would have to be bound by something, and well, so on, meaning that this closed universe could only exist if it was infinite. It was a clever argument, and is still brought up today, but it does have a fatal flaw. It assumes that the universe has an edge. Take this same argument and apply it to the surface of the Earth. We know that the Earth has a finite surface, but you could toss a javelin, pick it up, and toss it again, traveling in a straight line for all of eternity. Assuming you could walk on water, that is. Now, the point is that the Javelin argument assumes that a finite universe must be flat and therefore have an edge, but this is not the case. The exact geometry of the universe is unknown. However, there are numerous shapes that it could take that would create a finite universe with no edges or barriers. It could be a sphere, or a Mobius strip, a saddle, and so on. In all of the aforementioned scenarios, the universe would be curved. 
in some fashion. This is extremely important because that's something that we can actually detect. Everybody knows that the angles of a triangle sum to 180 degrees. It's one of the first things that we're taught in geometry class. However, that's not completely true. If you were to construct a large enough triangle on a curved surface such as a sphere, the angles of the triangle would be greater than 180 degrees. Similarly, we can think of lines of longitude on the globe. These are completely straight lines that begin parallel on the equator, but the curvature of the Earth causes them to intersect at the poles. If we could show that space was curved, that would be strong evidence for a finite, closed universe. Now, we already know that space does curve around objects with high gravity, so this seems like something that we could measure, and in fact, we have measured it with over 99% accuracy. While space curves locally around objects as a whole, it does appear to be flat. However, that still doesn't rule out the possibility of a finite, closed universe. It may not have been your first instinct upon looking at one, but a cylinder is considered a flat surface. This is because, unlike other curved structures, straight lines drawn from a cylinder can be extended to infinity and still run parallel with one another. Because of this, if we bend a cylinder into a donut shape known as a torus, it will be a closed system with a flat surface. Of course, it's also possible that the universe really is curved. After all, we can only call it flat with 99% accuracy. If you look out over the horizon, from your limited point of view, it would look as if the Earth was flat. That's compelling enough evidence to convince many modern people that Earth is flat, despite being blatantly incorrect and easily disproven. However, it's similarly possible that the universe actually is curved, and the horizon of our observable universe just isn't big enough for us to be able to see the curvature. But that would mean that our final universe would need to be unimaginably massive. Sure, the observable universe is already unimaginably massive, but this takes things to a whole new level. In order for our observable universe to appear flat, despite actually being a part of a larger curved universe, the universe would have to have an absolute minimum diameter of 23 trillion light years. And that just brings us to an infinite universe, and this is where things get a bit weird. The fact that our universe appears flat may suggest an infinite universe rather than a finite universe. We also see an even distribution of matter across the entire observable universe, suggesting that matter would be equally prevalent throughout an infinite universe. However, even if all matter in the universe was contained within the Big Bang, and there was a finite amount of it that begins to diminish beyond our view, that doesn't mean that the infinite universe would be empty. Even the empty vacuum of space isn't completely empty, it contains quantum fields. When these fields get excited, they give rise to particles. It's obviously a lot more complicated than that, since matter can't be created from nothing, but that's really the short version of it. But because these fields, in an otherwise empty vacuum, are able to give rise to these particles, even if it's with a low probability, they could generate enough particles to form entire galaxies. So, well, what would be out there in an infinite universe? The answer is, of course, everything, and that means literally everything. No matter how vanishingly unlikely something seems, if there is a non-zero probability of it happening, then it would have happened. Currently, Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster is orbiting Mars. It seems incredibly unlikely that particles would form to create a planet with a Tesla orbiting it, but since that probability isn't zero, then it would exist somewhere in an infinite universe. In fact, this would exist an infinite number of times. Travel far enough, and you could find a planet inhabited by a million monkeys working at a million typewriters to write works of Shakespeare. You could discover infinite Boltzmann brains floating in space, each imagining an entire reality, and of course, there would be an infinite number of Earth clones that developed both exactly like ours and in completely different ways. No matter how unlikely it may seem, in an infinite universe, there would assuredly be infinite copies of you watching this exact same video hundreds of billions of light years away. Sadly for me, Google AdSense doesn't take those views into account. So, if we define the universe as either our observable or causal universe, then the answer to what's beyond the edge is almost certainly just stuff that we'll never see. We could even define the universe as being restricted to the 17 billion light year radius that we could theoretically explore, in which case the answer to what lies beyond the edge is just the rest of the observable universe, which is annoyingly out of reach. As for the universe as a whole, what's at the edge of it depends on whether we live in a finite or infinite universe. If we live in an infinite universe, then there is no edge, it just does go on forever. There'd be a lot of crazy and unimaginable shit 
out there, but there would never be an end to it. Even if we live in a finite universe, in all likelihood, it still wouldn't have an end or barrier. It would almost certainly exist as some sort of closed geometric shape. For now, all we can do is guess which of these scenarios is most likely. There is no consensus among scientists as to whether our universe is finite or infinite, and currently there's no way for us to know. As absurdly massive as it is, the observable universe simply isn't big enough to give us a clear picture of the overall fundamental shape or size of the universe. This isn't just a matter of needing better technology either. This is something that will likely remain impossible to answer for all time. However, there is one other possible answer to what is at the edge of the universe. Maybe the edge of the universe isn't some mythical wall trillions of light years away. Maybe it was inside you all along. And we actually do mean that literally. Consider a flat piece of paper of infinite size. Now imagine that you not only drew a little person inside a spaceship on that paper, but that you have magical godlike powers with which to grant that person life, sentience, and immortality. Our little space traveler would live in an infinite universe that extended in all directions. From their perspective, traveling around that piece of paper for all eternity, the universe would be infinite and have no edge. But from our perspective, looking down at our creation, there would be very distinct and visible edges that exist at all points in space, even within the atoms that make up the drawing. That edge would be the jump from the second to the third spatial dimension, and our space traveler would have no idea that it even existed. Their two-dimensional consciousness would have no perception or awareness of this third dimension, and thus would have no reason to believe that there was any edge to their universe. As such, the fourth spatial dimension could exist as a similar edge in our own universe, omnipresent yet imperceptible. It's hardly impossible, and, and in fact the maths shows that a fourth spatial dimension could be possible. Of course, Good luck trying to see it, interact with it, or even imagine such a dimension. If it's there, it's something we can't mathematically model. But as three-dimensional beings in a seemingly three-dimensional universe, it's unlikely that this barrier could be crossed no matter how advanced technology becomes. That's also assuming that a fourth spatial dimension actually does exist and is just imperceptible to us. While the maths shows it's possible, there absolutely is no evidence that it exists. Whether it's finite or infinite, it's possible and indeed quite likely that our universe exists without any edges or boundaries. We'll just never be able to see it all for ourselves. At least not until it turns out the wormholes are both real and as magical as science fiction has led us to hope that they will be.